my brothers, different mothers. That's what I know. That's what I know. That's what I know. Zenbach back at Chiller Theater. Chiller Theater around Halloween time. And you know, some people are into making movies and some people are into making television shows. These guys are into making movies. I am Zenbach and you are? Scott Klein. Oh, Scott. Arlene So. Hello, Arlene. So, you have here on a table I, a little bit, I have some pictures and a tape running. What, what do you got here that you're promoting or talking about? This is uh, our first production called The Risen. It's a black and white 55 minute uh, horror film in the tradition of Alfred Hitchcock, in the tradition of uh, George Romero. It's more of a classic um, shocker than a gore fest. Uh, and it's in black and white to get that feel, play with shadows and light and dark. Alrighty. And that's our first uh, our first production. Did you ever see a film called The Raven years ago, a black and white film? That is with Vincent Price? Before that, I think it's Karloff. Karloff? No, I haven't. Yeah, no, yeah, haven't. it's classic with the black and white and the shadows. Right. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it. You know, this is, uh, you know. When I went in film school, I saw uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Calgary. Good film. And that was the first one that I looked at and just went, wow, there's so much you can do. 
yeah, with you, light and shadow. We even had on the show some scenes of Metropolis that oh, was yeah, redigitized. Fritz Lang. Yeah, Fritz yeah. Lang. The clock scene in the beginning was something else, you know. So, right. so I've just mentioned that. And Arlene, what do you do in the film or do with the company? I am actually one of the co-producers of the movie. So a co-producer. Co-producer. So we pretty much, it's a two-man crew, so we pretty much did a lot of the stuff in the movie, uh, sound, editing, camera shots. We pretty much did it ourselves. All right. I think what we'll do here is we'll talk about two things. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the, the little bit about the production aspects of it, because we have some people out there that might be interested in making films, movies, and videos. Okay. So the first thing I want to know is the medium you shot in for black and white was film or straight from video? It was mini DV. It was shot on mini DV. Gee, I know that format well. <laughs> uh, and then intentionally tr shot in color and then intentionally transferred into black and white. Okay. When you say the mini DV now, they've got these small little cameras out. It's, it's kind of handheld. Right. And it, it runs on a small tape. Right. But the quality is, is exceptional. Right. Well, that's exactly what we're using here is a Sony mini DV right. setup. Exactly. Which is a 1000 by us uh -huh. for those tech heads out there. <laughs> you know. It cuts down tremendously from, uh, from processing costs and developing costs and all the things that you run into with film. And they even have software that can put grain in a film. So, I was in a film um, with a little few scenes in the background as Zenbach. An Andy Garcia film. Okay. Uh, why, why I'm mentioning this is they filmed this movie, um, Just a Ticket. I'm sorry, because it came out as uh, t uh, the scalper when, by the time it came out. Uh -huh. But the point I'm getting at is they shot in film, but within the, the projector unit, they actually have a, d um, a video camera built in within the. Wow. So what they do is they go back after they shoot immediately and watch the digital video. And I think that's the point, is that with the, the, without using the film, you have an immediate look back and see what you got. Absolutely. Right. The, lighting, uh, the lighting is something that when I did film on 16 millimeter, uh, you trusted your light meter. Right. And then you could wait a week to get it back and find out that it's just horrible. Right. On TV, you can shoot a take. Rewind it, look at it, and go, I, I nailed it, and then just do it again. You know, what's also rough there is if you're not the largest million-dollar budget, I'm not saying you're one of the low budgets, we're no budget, by the way, and I'm proud of it, but if you wreck your buddy's car for the big money scene and it doesn't come out, you got to get another buddy. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Pretty much. Absolutely. So. We had one or two scenes that we probably only had one shot at. Right. I try to minimize that. I wrote the script uh, in a fashion that I knew I could film. I think a lot of people, uh, at least that I've talked to, that want to give me a script, you know, scene one is man flying over Manhattan, <laughs> and you know, you can't do we're that not, not quite uh, when you don't have the money. So. so I wrote it so I knew I could film it. Yeah, well, that's the other thing is, is that I have a son, a co-star. He started on my show at age six, mm -hmm. and he would come up with all kinds of great ideas, you know. Gee, Dad, let's do the howling scene where I transform. Uh, son, no, that's not in the budget. Let's do the Terminator scene. I think the, uh, what I taught, and I think what you're saying is if you're going to do a film, you've got to work the film with the means that you have. Right. And you're not limited by that because it's the creativity behind it. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You know um, in the background, we'll show you, is a zombie walking around. And immediately, I, I immediately think of shadowing, of the zombie coming in and, uh -huh. and, and shadows on walls and Absolutely. reactions to that. There's a, um, a particular shot, actually, in the film. It's very Nosferatu uh, with a shadow coming on the wall before the actual character hits the screen. And that's, that's some of the stuff that I really enjoy, is uh, that, that real Weimar Germany type of feel. Right. And that's something you can really get uh, in black and white. And especially uh, with the lighting we could use, we just would take a mag light and yeah, shine it at someone. And, and on DV, yeah. that's, you don't need much more. Yeah, no, it's, it's, the DV is a whole other world. All right, you want to talk a little bit about what the film is about? Sure. Um, the film is basically about a, uh, a grave digger. And he takes to taking the jewelry from people before he puts them in the ground to support his mistress. He doesn't have a whole lot of cash. The grave digging profession is not very lucrative. Yeah. So uh, through a series of events and, and, and ritual stones that he comes upon, uh, he activates this mystical force. And these things that have, he's taken things from come back to take back what he's taken. Um, and so he feels that the only thing he has to do is give back those things he's taken. But there's one thing that they've t that he's spent money on that he can't really return, and that's the whole click at the end of the film.
All right. Where do you come up with these ideas? I'm crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> in the <laughs> six, see, if he was old as me in the 60s, we used to say drugs. <laughs> but today we don't do that. We don't do that, you know. You know, you know, I was working on a disaster film. It's usually every time we hold the camera. No, 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 no. No, I'm only kidding. All righty. Well, you guys got anything else you would like to say to close up? Uh, the film will be available on there soon. And uh, certainly come to Chiller. We've had a blast here. So make sure you check it out. All righty. And we'll probably put up a link on our website so that you can get to their website for those people that like to do the safest form of mail that there is in the United States. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Jonathan, if you didn't like the chain I gave you, you could have... What was that? Jeez! Let's go! Easy. You know, what's going on? Come on, drive! Hey, 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 what's the matter with you? She's coming! Who? Ogilvy! Betty Ogilvy! Betty Ogilvy, Jonathan. Betty Ogilvy's dead. We buried no, her last June. No, she's tune. not! What was that? And you are an actress. Um, yes, I guess I like to act. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess the first question is: You have a deadly role in a movie. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> a killer role. <laughs> a killer role, a role. So tell tell me, you you come gracing across the screen. Uh, crawling is more like it. Crawling. Yes. Crawling. No graveyard scenes. Um, well, it takes place in a graveyard, but it hasn't been um, uh, set up yet. But, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think of acting? This is the first the first film. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work, but it was a lot of fun. They say it's more time to get into makeup than to do almost anything. That's true. A lot of waiting around. Yes. 
Yeah. What, what's the word? Is it action on the set? Or what do they usually yell? Um, no. No. They, be quiet. They, be quiet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I heard action on the set all day. You know. Yeah. You know. And they, how many times do you feel they they would do a takes with you? They do it in one take? No. No. Never in one take. Never. Huh? Never. <laughs> no. I work in one take. Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're, we're low budget. That's why. Well. No budget. No, you know. Well, I, I like the outfit. Thank you. This is your own your own wardrobe. Yes. What yes. about the makeup? Um, what makeup? See that? Oh, you're looking good. You're looking good. A little Thank you. sore here and there. Well, I have a skin condition. Yeah. I don't like to talk about it. Yeah. You used to go to the beach a lot, huh? Yeah. Actually, yeah. So you know, use uh, sunscreen because uh, you know the sun could kill. Yeah. You know. Well, see, there's a PSA for you. When you're at the beach in the summertime, it is best to use the proper sunscreen because the ozone layer has been depleted, and you know who's been depleting that ozone. I'm not going to say it. No. Yes. No. Well, I appreciate your time, my oh, dear. Well, thank you. You know. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Wow, she, you know, she's got the coldest hands. <laughs> I don't know how she does that. That's a good trick. Why, well, thank you. You're welcome. Dead on Zenbox Forte. Oh, is that the. Oh, 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 is that, oh, oh, is that what I should do? Yeah, uh, man, those how, did I stand on my toes? <laughs> no, I no, I'm not. Last time I was choking him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he likes that. He likes, he likes when we're mean. He likes mm -hmm. when we're mean. All right. Again. Yeah, see, things out there are, are turning into fall things, and I'm thinking about spring already. Yeah. I'm sort of always out of time. And out of space. Uh, yeah, out, definitely out of space. Well, time waits for no one. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing, Joe? Good. What are you doing here? Well, I'm here to uh, promote the movie that I'm in, uh, that Mike Rusin right over there uh, wrote, produced, directed, and it's called uh, Creepy Tales. Creepy Tales. Creepy Tales. Is it creepy? Pretty much. <laughs> it's about as creepy as me right now, but yes. Yeah. And you are an actor in it? Uh, yes, I am. You are an actor. I am an actor. Yeah, I play a character called The Professor. The Professor, yes. okay. As in not, not as the one in Marianne, but for The Professor. and. Uh, I introduce uh, the three uh, the three tales in the beginning, and I'm sort of like the uh, crypt keeper from Tales of the Crypt, I guess. All right, so we have three stories rolled into one. Yes, sir. And it, it's, at this point, it's a video v VHS and a DVD. That. Hey, Deb. Yeah. I have this idea. Oh. Oh, later, Deb. Later. <laughs> later. Oh, I can't wait. I, 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 later. You know, the ears are erect. They're ready. Oh yeah, they they're, are. They're ready. There's this guy named Stern. I heard of him. Yeah, Howard. Do um, you think he's ready for us? Oh, he's been ready. Do you think maybe we should let him see what we could really do? Shock this guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can we really shock him? Yeah, we could shock him. He's a shock jock, I heard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you can't shock a shock jock, <laughs> who can you shock? We, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Time for 
fun this thing, you know. We gotta go, cause end of the show, you know. But uh, I just wanna tell you, always remember there's no black, there's no white, there's only the blues. God bless y'all, now I see you so. I'm at Schiller Theater. It is April in the year 2001, and I'm Zen Bach. And who do I have here? Hi, Zen. This is John Provost Timmy from Lassie. Timmy from Lassie. Yeah. You know, I overheard somebody saying you're still cute. You get that a lot. <laughs> um, yes, and uh, my wife thinks I'm cute too. So it's that's what matters. <laughs> that you got it for sure. You know, she also said she also said a cute boy. Did you get the boy line? <laughs> Usually that's an insult, but it was a compliment. Well, no, back then, sure, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess I want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. All right. Uh, what, how did you manage to start acting? What got you into it? Wow, okay. I originally started when I was three years old, and the movie was called So Big with Jane Wyman and Sterling Hayden. And the way I got that, no, nobody in the family had ever been involved in show business. But my mother's idol growing up was Jane Wyman. And we lived out in uh, Los Angeles, and there was an ad in the paper that Warner Brothers was looking for a two- to three-year-old blonde boy to be in this movie with Jane Wyman. Well, you know, the light bulb went off in Mom's head, and she said, well, if I take him, maybe I'll get her autograph. There were 200 little boys, over 200 little boys, at the audition, and I got the job. And so I did a half a dozen movies before last year. I worked with Bing Crosby and Grace Kelly, and. Um, Rod Steiger, Cameron Mitchell, um, Anita Ekberg, uh, did Lassie for seven years. Then after Lassie, I did some more television, uh, three more movies. I worked with um, Natalie Wood and Robert Redford in uh, uh, This Property is Condemned. And I did, the last thing I did was a Disney movie called The Computer War Tennis Shoes. And that was with Kurt Russell and Cesar Romero, and that was great. Wow, wow. Uh, let me ask you this, I have a, a son who's, who's into acting, uh -huh. all right? And um, 
you have any any tips, anything you could think of as far as? Well, you, you know, it's like um, when I first got the part on Lassie, I asked Tommy Reddick, who played Jeff. We we did like a six months transition period, and I asked him the same question, and he said, "As long as you're having fun and it's something you want to do, then go for it." And that's the best thing. I mean, and I didn't really have any formal training because I grew up obvious, you know, working when I was three on the studio, so, um, but I think it's also really important to have something to fall back on, because, you know, you could be, be there one day and then the next day you're not, so, you know, education and all that's really important. Right, I had an actor, Robert Hurd, he said to me, when you're an actor, you better learn to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got it right. He's got it right, you know. So, well, I appreciate your time, right. you know, and I'm glad to see you. Is it your first time coming in here? Oh, yeah, first time, and we're having a ball. All right, well, I hope to see you back here again. All right. Well, Thanks thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Sam. All right. Thanks. Okay, okay. I didn't bring any religious medals. I didn't even bring that pentagram that you wanted. All right, we didn't appreciate the humor on that. No garlic, no pentagrams. Listen, I want to ask you, would you like to go out tomorrow night after midnight? We'll go out for steak dinner? No. Okay. Look, I'm really trying, you know. I'm single now. The last two wives, they're gone. It was a good hundred years. I've been very, very good. And I really want to go out on a date. Okay? And you can put the fangs away, and we can go out and have a good time. So, all right, you ready? Say something. All right, this is a public service announcement on Zenbox 4K. You have to treat women very, very well. They like to be respected. They like to go out. They like to be wined and dined. And if you do that and treat them well, well, good things will happen. You know what I mean, guys. You've got to be gentlemen. All right. That's it, a tip on dating with Zenbach on Zenbox 4K. Hey.